Hello guys! I happen to have for you today a full build video of building this magnificent model of the USS Texas. A ship that has been in the news recently because this important US Navy monument has finally lived to see its renovation, which is actually taking place in Dry Dock in Galveston. The building of our model will take place in Dry Dock in scale. Shall we start? As usual, in the beginning I prepare the hull elements. I cut out the elements of the frames and glue them together using extra thin glue. Amazing, isn't it? Then, to hide the joint areas, I send them with a file. This is the first model why I didn't use a single bit of any putty to seal the joints. The hull parts are almost perfectly fitted together. Then I glue the 10mm nuts from the inside of the hull, so that I can put the model on a cool base in the future. During the building of the model, they will also be handy because I have a working base to not touch the model constantly. Without waiting a moment, I close the hull with a deck. This one also fits perfectly. The hull is ready for painting. But first washing with soapy water. This way there will be no surprises later when peeling off the masking tape, for example. I give it time to dry and start with coat of primer. I use one shot primer from AK Interactive. Attention, now an experiment. You can find some photos of the deck of the real USS Texas. The deck is painted grey and looks very weathered. At least, that's what it looked like before the restoration. This is the effect I want to get. I start by applying a thin layer of wood color, but with the addition of grey so that this layer is not too bright. Next, a new thing on my channel. Chipping fluid. I also cover the entire deck with a thin layer of fluid using an airbrush. The last layer of paint. Grey color. It would be better if this layer was really thin. This will make it easier to do the next step. And the next step is nothing else than to treat the whole thing with hard brush with water. Chipping fluid reacts with water and it's removed by it with the top layer of grey paint, of course. This will make the deck look damaged. You can experiment with different brushes. If you want more control over the effect, then use a soft one. I took the faster way. An airbrush is useful to remove excess water. If a hard paintbrush is not enough, you can also use a toothpick. Light scratching can effectively remove the top layer of paint.
I must admit that the experiment worked. I like the effect very much and it's not over yet. I will still paint all the deck stuff with a brush. There is so much of it that I prefer to use a paintbrush than to mask the deck with a masking tape and paint the whole thing with an airbrush. Let's deal with the sides of the ship for a moment. You can skip this step because I'm about to repeat it anyway. Let's pretend the side is not painted yet. First, paint the black waterline. Then I mask it with 3mm masking tape and when I know I won't cover it with paint, I paint the upper part of the hull. That is what I did just before. It is best to have dirty and long fingernails to perform this activity. I do not lie. Now I can mask it and paint the bottom of the ship with typical red color. As usual, peeling of the tape is very satisfying. I would be very afraid now if I had not previously painted the model with primer after washing. Fortunately, this time I did everything right and the result came out great. Wonderful! I quickly cover the whole model with glossy clear varnish and apply panel liner black. Yeah! Now the gaps between the boards are more visible. The deck has become darker and deeper. Great! The deck is finished. The oil paints. They will be useful for making weathering. As with every model I built, I apply dots in white, black and brown and smear them with an enamel thinner brush. This will give a cool effect and the ship will already look old and dirty.
I fill the windows with black color, but only the windows. I decided that the ship is too dark to use wash on the whole model. Is this a good decision? You will see at the end. I make some rusty marks where the chains will appear. Okay, I can put the hull on the shelf for now. It is time to make the superstructure elements. Here I connect the plastic and metal parts right away using super glue. Oh, I bet this element will fall a few times more before the end of building. The superstructure elements that have more than one color I masked and painted with an airbrush. In this case it was a faster solution. As I said before, I do not use wash to get the depth. Instead, I do a dry brush technique with a lighter color. I mix three colors, white, black and a touch of blue. I haven't seen anyone use oil paints for dry brush technique yet, but I like to work this way. The effect can be always removed if necessary. With acrylic paints it would not be so easy. Here you have comparison of before and after effect. Now I am placing some of the larger superstructure elements on the deck. Each other element is very gratifying. Mainly for the fact that it makes more space on the desk. First armament appears on the ship. The main superstructure element is not too straight, so even strong glue could let go over time. For this I decided on a drastic solution. I fixed the elements with screws. This has passed the test. Not a bit of glue and the screws will be covered by the next elements. <laughs> Several dozen elements later, the ship looks almost finished. Still some work ahead.
For the building of this model, I will use the parts I used when building the previous LST. The parts are 3D printed and the 3D models I created myself can be downloaded on my Patreon. For USS Texas, I had to print 42 such guns. Insane. You may now see glue marks, but no worries. The whole model will be covered with matte varnish at the end. The model came with a chain, but it had a metal color. I used one that I bought separately. It is already black. Next, the railings. I already painted them separately. After gluing them to the hull, they will only need a little touch up with paintbrush. And now the stairs, ladders and other tiny details. It is those details that make the model really attractive. Imagine what the model would look like without them. Realistic pantoons, which can also be printed after a visit to my website. As you noticed, the non-wood part of the deck was too bright and too clean. Actually, not only the deck. So I fretted it with a very thin brown oil paint. After this treatment, the ship will look like it is 100 years old. Because it has. Then came the rigging, one of the last steps, a few ropes across. I was in a bit of hurry here. When you see the flag, you can guess that the end is coming. And you're right. The model is ready. I invite you to the presentation. Another great warship behind us. I learned many new things myself during this building. Definitely, patience with working with small guns. 
I hope you liked the video and will wait for the next ones. The next ship will be German. Of course, I give a huge thanks to my patrons. As usual, you guys are wonderful. Thank you.